a dating expert, mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of men who complain that actually dating is now impossible because if you try and make a pass at someone, if you try and indicate that you're in interested, put my, maybe a hand on a knee, you could be accused of sexual harassment, lose your job. I mean, I don't and know. And your reputation. I'm not quite sure what men you're speaking about because the men that I know and the men that I deal with, they have absolutely no problems in the confidence that their approach is correct and gentlemanly. The only people are moaning are the loser men who have predatory tactics to go out and get a woman into bed. No one else is moaning. Like, the confident guys are like, this is a good thing, Me Too's a good campaign, and it's good for women to speak out because they never realise how much and prolific sexual harassment is in and out of the workplace. Got it. If you point out the flaws of Me Too, then you're a loser. Except, what about Johnny Depp? Is he a loser? He was being abused and was almost killed by his wife, Amber Heard, who used Me Too to write a hit piece on him. What about Brett Kavanaugh, who had his whole life turned upside down over an allegation where every witness said it didn't happen? What about Pro Jared, who nearly had his YouTube and streaming career destroyed because of Me Too? These guys don't have anything to worry about, right? Only men who are bad dislike Me Too, and you can only be a good man if you agree with the movement. It's like this chick is saying that everyone who doesn't have the same opinion as her is only thinking that way because they're evil. Anyway, for those of you who haven't heard, Me Too is back, and this time it's here to cancel every man in the gaming industry. This CNN article says over a hundred people, mostly women, let's be honest CNN, no one cares at all when a man is sexually assaulted by a woman. So over a hundred people decided to go to Twitter to name their abusers. This woman, Enola Leon, with no evidence or police report, said that she had drinks with a guy at a hotel who she claims that she wasn't attracted to. After drinks, she went to his room and slept in the same bed as him, even though there were multiple beds in the room. While in bed, he, quote, digitally penetrated her without her consent. She left the scene after it happened. Now, if she felt that she was assaulted and traumatized, then why didn't she get a rape kit? Rape kits do all sorts of DNA testing to prove that the guy was with you. Semen, blood, saliva, fingernail scrapes, hair, etc. There's plenty of ways to obtain evidence. So why didn't she do that, and why didn't she report it to the police, so that at least the guy would be in the system, even if he didn't get convicted? If multiple women say he's a rapist, which Anola alleges they have, and one of them has a bit more evidence than her, then Anola's report will make it easier to convict the guy. In her stream addressing the subject, she goes on and on about how hard it is to convict a rapist. Well, you are actively making it harder to convict them by not putting your case on the record. Unless there is some other reason that these women aren't putting it on the record. Why might that be? Look at this guy. He got canceled from Ubisoft, and he didn't even assault anyone. He cheated on his wife. The girl he cheated with found out he was married. She got mad and publicly posted his dirty laundry on Twitter. Sure, cheating on your wife is immoral, but this woman was a consenting adult. He committed no crimes against her, yet she went after his employment. Is that the precedent that we want to set? Anytime you break up with a girl or have a bad relationship, she can get you fired from your job or taken off a major project? All this does is encourage abusers. As soon as certain people realize that the standards of proof can be broken, they are going to start abusing the system. They are going to try to forgo due process to punish people that they don't like. It happened with Vic Mignogna. The Funimation voice actors didn't like that he was Christian or the fact that he was far more successful than they were. So they accused him of being a pedophile and doctored photo evidence to make it look like he was assaulting underage women. He lost his entire voice acting career due to a bunch of Twitter warriors and these false allegations. The more these social media attacks come out, the more the standards of proof will be lowered and the easier it will be to ruin an innocent person's life just because you don't like them. If I'm going to remotely believe any of these allegations, then I want to see evidence of a police report of the assault from all these stunning and brave Twitter warriors or the assault didn't happen. No police report, no crime. The standards must be upheld for everyone equally even with the people you don't like, especially with the people you don't like, 
because that's where it counts the most. There is a reason why the Founding Fathers wrote these principles into American law, and that's because they protect innocent people. You have the right to free speech. You have the right to protect yourself. You have the right to know what crime you're being charged with. You have the right to know who your accuser is. You have the right to defend yourself against your accuser in a jury of your peers. Do you know how many men died so that we could have those rights in America? They are there because when you don't have them in place, a bunch of abusers take over, collapse the system, and as a consequence, a lot of innocent people get hurt. And I'm not just talking about the government. These principles should be upheld everywhere, including private companies such as YouTube and Twitch, even though they aren't legally required to. These are good ideas that keep systems healthy. The reason they are in place is because the alternative method has a high rate of entrapping tons of people who have done nothing wrong, while at the same time empowering a group of people who selectively enforce the rules to their advantage. How many times in history does this lesson have to be learned? Well, I guess there's always bit shoots. And oh hey, here's something that the Me Tourers don't want you to see. Some guys went onto Tinder and made fake profiles with attractive models advertising that they were criminals and child molesters who wanted to meet up. We'll get into how that turned out, but first, we have a sponsor, Dr. B. Real and his book, Surviving Fourth Wave Feminism, The War on the West. His two-volume book shows the reader how feminism truly works and how they have hijacked and corrupted freedom by changing the culture and the language of the West. This book is a very easy read and enjoyable throughout. You can purchase your copy of Surviving Fourth Wave Feminism by following the first link in the description. All right, so this fake Tinder user's name is Ray, and he is 23 years old. He is an aspiring model, and he says, You should know I've had trouble with the law my whole life, convicted three times for rape of a child and once for sexual activity with a child, but to be fair, she turned 16 like a week later, so it was super unfair, but whatever. I hope you, therefore, can forgive me for my past crimes. Guess what? This woman responds, Hey, when I was seven, I stole a gumball from my corner store, and I felt guilty about it for years. I guess that makes us equally evil. Yes, random stranger on the internet, stealing a gumball is the exact same thing as molesting a child. Another match says, Hey, every criminal has the chance to be forgiven, but then again, there's something very attractive about a bad boy. The question is, how bad does this bad boy get, and does this bad boy need a naughty girl to keep him bad? Unbelievable. Women say all the time that they won't date certain guys they don't find attractive because they are, quote, creepy, or they look like child molesters. Well, here are some examples of women who are excited to meet and have sex with a guy who is attractive but is also a creepy child molester. So yes, women will knowingly go into relationships with men they know are bad. And yes, women will even knowingly go into relationships with criminals. Women absolutely do this. But to be fair, this isn't hashtag all women like a lot of people have said it is. However, it's not that uncommon. I want to be clear on this, though. There is a certain type of woman who goes after an admitted criminal. As a lot of things do, this behavior stems from childhood. The things you learn early on in life have a drastic effect on who you become as an adult. That effect can be either very positive or very negative. One of the odd things that happens in childhood, though, is that childhood trauma tends to turn into sexual attraction as an adult. You ever wonder why spanking fetishes are so popular with adults? So what happens in the case of this Tinder post, or in the case of Me Too, is that a woman was molested at a young age, so she then seeks out relationships with abusive guys over and over again, to reenact that trauma cycle. These women are hyper-stimulated during childhood to the point where normal relationships and sexual experiences seem boring. This is why women will ask to be choked during sex, or be called a slut or a whore, or be into things like BDSM. They can't feel sexual any other way because of their untreated childhood trauma. These women are knowingly engaging in relationships with abusers because they crave the abuse. This is the part of the story that Me Too doesn't want you to see because it weakens their narrative. However, in psychology, this is common knowledge. Abuse cycles and how they work are very well known. 
Even in Hollywood, you will see abuse cycles accurately portrayed on film. But family structures never get talked about in politics by mainstream media. In fact, mainstream media actively goes out of its way to encourage broken families, single mothers, and bad behavior. But if I were so much as to suggest that sexual assault could be prevented by a change in behavior in the victim, then I am victim blaming. Try that with anything else. You touch a hot stove and get burned. I say that if you don't want to get burned, then don't touch the hot stove. That makes sense, right? Nope. If I tell you to not touch the hot stove, then I am victim blaming and I am a part of the problem that promotes the patriarchal rape culture. What we really should do is blame the stove for burning you. That will solve the problem. See how stupid that sounds? So what ends up happening is that these women never learn how to prevent the problem, so they end up touching the burning stove over and over and over again, and then get pissed that the stove burned them. Every single one of these alleged assault victims from the gaming Me Too drama that I read invited the alleged perpetrator into their life. I also looked up quite a number of Me Too stories on Twitter, and they were the exact same thing. Take a look at this one. My first sexual assault was when I was six. Okay, so we have child molestation. That sets up the pattern for her to seek out abusers. She goes out with a baseball player who says to her, don't make me rape you when she sees him one afternoon at his dorm. She decides on a different occasion that it would be a good idea to get really drunk with him. And so, bad things happen. If the story that she alleges is true, then yes, That's a terrible thing, but you are going to tell me that it's bad to tell her that she shouldn't be alone with the guy who said in the past that he was going to rape her if she said no to sex. It's almost as if mainstream media and radical political groups want these women to feel forever terrorized and feel like they can never get better because then the radical groups can turn the victims into useful idiots that they can use to cancel whoever they want. Listen to this. This is Enola Leon talking again about her alleged assault at the hotel. My PTSD episodes got really bad after that. You never get over being violated like that. You just find ways to cope with the flashbacks, nightmares, shame, etc. So she feels that she will forever be tortured by these events and will never get better. Enola is like the gift that keeps on giving. She will likely be assaulted again because she isn't getting treatment for the childhood trauma that sets these assaults up in the first place. And, if she is telling the truth, then her story can be used as justification to get people to believe women who are using Twitter to not be honest, which will lead to the standards of proof being lowered. Here's the thing, though. Despite the lies that these radical groups tell you, she can get treatment for her trauma, and she can get rid of the nightmares and post-traumatic stress. As I always say, It's not your fault for being abused as a child, but it is your fault for harming others because of your abuse. And that's what a Twitter allegation does. It subverts our truth-seeking method called due process, while the outrage mobs or the websites themselves keep the other side of the story from being heard. Oh, you want to defend yourself? Too bad, your Twitter account is banned. Now you are forever branded as a rapist with no recourse. I don't care if the person is guilty or not. These Twitter allegations are abuse because they set a precedent that is extremely harmful to the very many men who are falsely accused. It sets a harmful precedent for anyone to be falsely accused. Not to mention that some of these women are so traumatized that they see everything as rape and everything as assault. You can be accused of sexual assault for putting your arm around a girl for a picture as long as it triggers one of her past memories. Looking at a woman is sexual assault. So contrary to what the dating expert said at the start of the video, you have to keep yourself protected and you have to reduce risk. Because of the rampant single motherhood in the West and the fact that stepfathers are far more likely to be abusive than biological fathers, abuse victims are everywhere. You need to learn the things that they aren't, which is how to identify people who will cause you problems. The fortunate thing is, that people are extremely predictable, and untreated trauma survivors who will accuse you of crimes that you didn't commit all tend to wear the same uniform and all tend to speak the same language. 
people who are untreated abuse victims love to break social norms of physical attractiveness, so they will often have tons of tattoos. They will often have nose rings, tongue rings, genital piercings, nipple piercings, black fingernail polish, and they love to dye their hair unnatural colors like red or purple. Honestly, they tend to look like your stereotypical fourth-wave feminist. Women who are untreated abuse survivors also have certain catchphrases. If you are older, one of the most famous ones is, I've had my fun, and now I'm ready to settle down. Oh, so you dated a bunch of abusive guys, and now you're settling for me. No thanks. If you are younger, like in your teens or early 20s, an untreated abuse survivor might say something like, I am mature for my age. Guys my age are just too childish and immature for me. That's why I like older men. This phrase will be used to justify dating someone vastly older than her, like a 14-year-old dating a 30-year-old. She isn't mature for her age. She was molested as a child, and that childhood trauma turned into an attraction to men who are significantly older than her. And this goes for all of you men who want to date 18-year-olds at 45. Understand that those women aren't healthy and you are upping your risk for a false allegation. Don't put your hand on a hot stove. Last, stay away from women who abuse drugs. Stay away from anyone who abuses drugs. The reason quite a number of people do drugs and become addicts is because they want to forget their childhood instead of dealing with it. People who have untreated abuse will do all sorts of crazy and dangerous things that you don't want to be present for. In times like these, especially during the chaos that's going on this year, you need to keep yourself protected. Don't act like an idiot. If you don't want to get burned, then don't put yourself around people who will burn you. And with that said, I think that will be enough for this video. So if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can always find those links in the description. Last, if you haven't checked me out on Facebook, BitChute, or Twitter, you can also find those in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.